I bought a used Hustler 6 BTV and I decided that I was going to make a short video about how I put the whole thing together. Sometimes it'll be me talking to you over the microphone and sometimes it'll be uh, natural sound. Uh, this is only my second video, so be gentle with me, guys. Well, I had a six-foot pole I had to bury four feet into the ground and leave two feet sticking out. And I had hard, packed clay. And I worked about an hour or so, and I, I barely made any progress, maybe 14, 15 inches or so. And I, I said, there has to be a better way to work through this clay. And, man, that's all the dirt I got out, you know. And then... I was thinking, and then I, then I had an idea. I already owned this pressure washer, so it was no biggie. And it was just pure clay with very little tiny rocks in it. So I figured, why don't I try and just blast through it? Uh, I had a, a long enough pole to put on my pressure washer that would go down at least four feet. And boy, did that work. I, the pole just went through like a hot knife through butter into that clay. And I'm telling you, I had the, uh, the rest of the th roughly three feet dug out in probably, I don't know, 20, 25 minutes. And here we are about uh, two days later when I've uh, put in three and a half bags of concrete and put the pole in, leveled the pole, and set the pole to dry. And let me fold it over. Go back to the view. So that's where it will fold in that direction. That is the place where all of my coax are going to exit. The basement is a ground rod. So I've got to build a trench from here to there. It's about 22, 25 feet, somewhere in there. And here is my trench that I'm making. It goes from there all 25 feet out to there. And what I do is, since I don't have a spare hand, I'm going to just, you can have to imagine, I'm holding this up on the ground. I hit this here, hit this here, then I go back and forth, and then if I need it deeper, I hit it there and there, and I go back and forth, and I end up with a six inch trench. I have put in the coax and a ground wire, and it goes down about a foot. I've already covered most of it up. But here you can see where it's open. And I just, I haven't finished the ground, nor have I finished it uh, going into the house. That's all temporary. And here is the other side of that pipe that I just brought the ground wire, the LMR 400 direct burial, and going off to the cold water pipe on the other side of this concrete wall, this concrete block wall, is some braided wire. And the other thing is just a pull wire, so I need to pull some more. Well, look what the mailman just brought me. Some of the best UHF connectors I have ever had the pleasure of using. Uh, they're about 17 bucks for a set. There's actually five or six pieces in each connector. And that's who I got them from. And this is the lightning arrestor system. The ground is continuous. Well, it's slowly but surely. Today, I mounted the radial plate. I finished, that's the top of an eight foot rod. 
that goes all the way down. So I had to take a couple days break in putting in the uh, this. So I'm going to put 30 radials and even maybe more. But what I've decided to do was start with just 15, just so I can get something down. And that's uh, 15 radials would be 24 degrees per slice. And here's all the tools I used. I solder the lugs. That helps me screw it down. Wire strippers, junk, and hardware. And of course, a mallet. So now I have less than one quarter of my radials in, but I'll call it a good day. Well, here I am taking my time, but I finally got radials all the way around. I've got my DC ground or my lightning ground hooked up. I still need to hook from my rod to a bolt right, an empty hole right there. Obviously that's my coax, still needs to be connected. But I laid out a thousand feet of radial wire and I still need to buy another, I don't know, 500 foot. Uh, I am the king of going overboard as you'll probably have recognized. Just today I finished all the radials, at least laying them out. You can see some where I used 100% of the holes and some where I used 50% of the holes. And that's because on the short length, I went all over there. And on the long lengths, I did every other hole and then back over here on the short lengths I did every hole and then back to the longer ones I went every other hole. Well I had an interesting revelation today. I noticed my mailman parks where that car is and he walks right across my lawn. I'm sure he's not looking down for wires since I'm probably the only one that does it. So what I've decided to do is I took the smallest rake that I could find and I raked it. And that's why you see piles of thatch. I raked it so that I could straighten out the leaves underneath it. And I'm gonna put a higher frequency of staples all along these wires. I also had a bunch of dog walkers. They love to sniff my property for some reason. It's a very uh, pedestrian friendly neighborhood and that pole over there is obviously the doggy telegraph. That's a street sign. So they uh, sniff and leave and or leave messages there so they go on the lawn a lot. I do discourage it politely with the people. So that's it. That's my radial field, my temporary toolboxes, my radial wire, here it is August, about two weeks after I've laid down the field and I've cut my grass. These things right here, are, I found one wire that's a little proud. Uh, that's gonna be pushed down. There's also another one right here. I can, if you look here, right there you can see the wire. That's, I had to make sure I lifted the lawnmower there. Uh, Next door, they're doing a roofing job, so sorry for all the noise. But yeah, I didn't have any problem, didn't snag a single wire. There's radials down here. Let's see if we can spot one. Yeah, here's one. Right there's a radial. But you come over here, you can barely spot it. I'm following it. Only where the grass was shy. Can you see it? There's a few spots I have to put down. Uh, a few spots I have to put down staples. I basically work 20 and 40 meters with this. That uh, 80 meter 
thing on the end is kind of a waste. Maybe I'll try 80 meters. I have it set for the CW portion. Here it is mid-August. And I figure I'll give you one last close-up of the system here. I have my, I called it a ballon before, but it's an un-un. I still have to add a wire in place of this jumper clip hit lead here. That uh, is just my static grounder. It's a high impedance resistor to ground. And I have uh, some braid that I connected to the ground. A little short pigtail up to my un un. And you can just barely see my trench. Take a close up over here. And I've cut the lawn a second time. I've cut it with a tractor. And I'm having a hard time seeing the wires. Let's see if I can find one here. Yeah, I'm having a hard time seeing one. Hey, look what I just picked up for 30 bucks. I'm just gonna flip them. Somebody will buy them. I have made contacts 2,000 miles away already. And he, he was very happy that I was only running 100 watts. He thought it was pretty good. And in this bare spot, you can see the wires. But here we are four feet away from their bare spot. I have cut the grass twice and I've not snagged it with a mower at all. I'd say it's been about four or five weeks since I buried everything. And you can't see it. There's uh... let me zoom in there. So the wire should be right about here. Oh yeah, you can just see it. Yeah, you can just barely see the wires. I didn't realize I was standing right on one. They're well hidden. Made some contacts, um, Ohio to Canada, Ohio to the ocean side of Washington, DC, Ohio to New York, and a few other states.